Hi, this is Jesse Liberty for Telerec. Today we're going to take a look at data binding with the RAD Combo Box. RAD Combo Box is part of the Telerec RAD controls for Silverlight and WPF control suite for .NET and XAML development. We're going to take a look at data binding and to do that we're going to need to create some sample data. And then we'll look at how to bind that sample data to the combo box, work with the selected item, and then finally we're going to add a watermark to instruct the user on opening and selecting from the combo box. Let's go to Visual Studio, click on Silverlight and the uh, C Sharp RAD controls and name this new application RAD Combo Box Data. Click OK and we're going to leave this exactly as it is. We do want Silverlight 5. When the Telerik configuration wizard comes up, we're going to click Input that will add the input library as well as any dependency libraries, in this case the controls library, to our application. We can see that by going over to the references in the Solution Explorer and taking a look and we'll see that Telerik Windows Controls is there and Telerik Windows Controls Input is there. Let's begin by adding a combo box to our main page. Give that a width, name the combo box, which we'll just call Rad Combo Box. Save that, and we're ready to start thinking about what data we want to put in there. So let's go back to the project, right click and choose Add Class, and we will create a class which we're going to call Agency. Let me drop in a code snippet on Agency to save you having to watch me type the public properties and constructors for agency. You can see that it's very simple. There are three public properties, name, phone, and zip. We'll save that, go back to the project, say add class, and this time we're going to create a view model class whose entire purpose is to create the data that we're going to need to create that sample data. So let's call this agency view model, and once again I'll use a code snippet here so that you can see how we're going to drop all of this data in. We're getting red squiggly lines because we don't have the include for the observable collection, so let's add using the object model, and I did that by hitting control dot and then having IntelliSense help me, and now you can see that we're adding all of these agencies into an observable collection of agency. Let's save all of that, return back to our XAML, we're going to create a namespace called example, and that's going to be the namespace for this very application. So let's scroll down and find the application, add that. That's going to allow us now to create a resource. So the first thing to do is to create the resources area. Next, we can use that namespace example. That'll help us find the agency view model. And then let's give that a key, which we will call data sources, and we'll save that. We can now come down to our combo box control and update that to use the resource that we just created as the items source for our combo box. This creates the binding between the collection pointed to by data source and the combo box itself. We're going to add another resource. In this one, I've used a code snippet for a fairly complex combo box custom template. This is the custom template that's going to determine how each member in the combo box is displayed. You can see we have two columns and two rows. And in that, we're going to have a text box, which binds to the name, a text block, which binds to the phone, and one which binds to the zip, as well as a couple text blocks for labels. Let's go ahead and update the combo box so that it knows what its item template is and it's going to use that static resource we just built and we'll add a height of 50 and we're ready I think to try this. Let's run the application. When the browser comes up there's our combo box. We drop down there's our laid out according to our data template. All of the data that was created in the agency view model. We're going to grab one, click on it, and that gets added to the combo box. So data binding is as simple as that. It's creating a collection of your data, 
and then setting that to be the item source and creating a data template for how you want that data to be displayed. Let's go into the code behind. We'll create an event handler for the loaded event. We're going to add an event handler for the combo boxes selection changed event. Every time the selection changes, this event handler will be called. Let's scroll down to that event handler. And here you can do whatever it is you want to do with the selected item as the selections change in the combo box. What we're going to do is simply show that we're able to extract data out of that combo box and we'll display that in a message box. All right, selected is going to be the agency that is the currently selected item. We know that the combo box is populated with items of type agency, so we can do that cast, and then we can display any property of that message box we want by saying selected dot, and you see the IntelliSense shows the various properties. We'll just use name to show that we are able to extract information out of that agency. Let's run that, drop down our combo box, make a selection, and you can see we were able to pull the name out. Another one, the selection changes, and we see that reflected as well. Let's come back to the XAML and add a new attribute, empty text, which is what will be displayed when nothing has been selected yet, when the combo box has nothing selected the empty text that we put in here will be shown to the user. So let's run that and you can see that that text is displayed because there's been no selection yet. As soon as we make a selection it's going to replace the text in the combo box. That's an introduction to data binding. Please be sure to come back for our next video where we'll look at autocomplete. For Telerik this is Jesse Liberty. Thanks very much and I look forward to speaking with you again soon.